We welcome everyone joining us today from around the world for the seventh webinar in our Multiverse webinar series. Today's webinar is on the Radio Scan Frequency Analyzer. I'm Harrison Honholt of City Theatrical, and I'll be your presenter today. I hope you watched our first six Multiverse webinars and are now familiar with Multiverse technology and the recommended best practices for wireless DMX in general. For those who have not had a chance to view our first six webinars, I'll do a brief recap so everyone is aware of what you can learn by reviewing those webinars on our YouTube channel. Our first webinar was an introduction to the 11 breakthrough technologies that make Multiverse different than any other wireless DMX in the world. In our second webinar on Multiverse Show Baby, we discussed the radio technology that we use, frequency hopping spread spectrum. We also introduced the concept of show IDs, described best, basic best practices for wireless DMX, gave an introduction to RDM and City Theatrical's DMX Cat, and did a basic setup of a simple broadcast. In our third webinar on Multiverse Node, we taught how to set up a simple point-to-point -point broadcast system. In addition, we described the use of the 900 megahertz band and worked with specialized antennas for situations where the default omnidirectional antenna is not the best choice. We also described how to designate the multiverse node to be a receiver on a specific universe of a multi-universe broadcast. And we again explored the use of RDM and DMX cat in setting up a system. In our fourth webinar, we learned about the multiverse transmitter, which contains four different radios, and which can broadcast as many as 10 universes from one transmitter. In that webinar, we set up a complex nine universe broadcast with 18 multiverse node receivers. Our fifth webinar concentrated on wireless dimming with our ColorFlex 5 by 2.5 amp 900 megahertz 2.4 gigahertz multiverse dimmer and our ColorFlex 2 by 2.5 amp 2.4 gigahertz multiverse dimmer. These are small, full featured dimmers for scenery, props, and costumes. In this webinar, we showed you how to set up and control LED tape wirelessly. In our sixth webinar, we showed you our multiverse receiver card, which allows anyone, whether they are an electrician, prop builder, tinkerer, or inventor, to easily and quickly implement a tiny multiverse receiver into any DMX device. These receiver cards are even used by manufacturers who don't, who don't have high volumes or don't want to spend the engineering time to do a full multiverse module implementation. All of our webinars live on as recordings on the multiverse pages on our website www.citytheatrical.com forward slash multiverse and as YouTube videos. If you are new to wireless DMX or want to reinforce your fundamentals, you can find lots of helpful information on the downloads tab of all the multiverse pages of our website, including manuals, quick start guides, case studies, and white papers. You may want to start with our white papers, what you need to know about wireless DMX, and how advances in wireless DMX will change the way we do lighting. These two white papers will give you a good baseline understanding of wireless DMX technology. If you have any questions today, please type them into the Q&A box at the top of your screen. You may need to click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen to open that Q&A box. Be sure to address your questions to all panelists, which enables me to see them. We'll answer all the questions we can today. And if we don't get to yours during this broadcast, we'll answer it by email. Now it is time for our swag giveaway. One listener will earn a new City Theatrical t-shirt just for signing up for the webinar today. We're reaching the fishbowl, pick out a name. And it is Ken Hudson. Congratulations, Ken. We will contact you by email and make the arrangements to get you your shirt. Before we get started today, here's a short public service announcement on behalf of ESTA's behind the scenes organization. Even without the uncertainties of life in a pandemic, the unique environment and stresses of working in the entertainment industry are extremely challenging. It's critical to make sure you and those you care about stay healthy mentally, emotionally, and physically. The behind the scenes mental health and suicide prevention initiative is providing tools and resources specifically for entertainment industry workers at btshelp.org forward slash mental health. These include Be Seen, Be Heard, a 24-7, 365 peer-to-peer -peer chat app, an online therapist finder that only includes therapists who understand the industry, anonymous online behavioral self-assessments to help you understand what you're feeling, 
easy to navigate resource links so you don't get overwhelmed looking for help, and suicide prevention information and posters to help save lives. Go to btshelp.org forward slash mental health for more information. We have a lot to get through today, so let's get started. Here's the growing family of Multiverse Wireless DMX and RDM products. Today, we are going to be looking at our Radio Scan Frequency Analyzer. Radio Scan is an important member of the Multiverse family because it can help all Multiverse products work better by avoiding interference and finding the best spot in the spectrum to broadcast. Let's start off today by talking a bit about the science of radio. There is electromagnetic energy all around us, constantly, except for the small slice of the electromagnetic spectrum that is visible light. The rest of spectrum is not visible and only can be detected with specialized equipment. Radio occupies a small but important part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's define a few important terms we'll need to know to understand radio better and to be able to use radio scan effectively. Wavelength is simply the length of one complete radio wave. Electromagnetic waves can be very large or very small. The ones we will be dealing with are a few inches long. Frequency is a measure of how many times that wave passes a single point in one second, also known as cycles per second, or hertz, named after the, a pioneer in the electrical field, Heinrich Hertz. Frequency can also be large or small, and is in fact inversely proportional to wavelength. The frequencies we will be discussing are very large in the millions or billions of cycles per second or hertz. Amplitude is the height or signal strength of the radio wave. Density is the percentage of time a specific amplitude of radio energy was measured on a specific frequency during a specific time period. Density helps us understand the difference between a signal that appears very briefly and then is gone and a signal that appears over and over again in one spot. The radio signals we are discussing today are in the unlicensed ISM or industrial scientific and medical band. The first band is commonly called 2.4 gigahertz and the frequencies in it range are uh, from 2.4 to 2.483 gigahertz. Giga is a prefix meaning billion. So these waves have a frequency of around 2.4 billion hertz. The second band of interest to us is 900 megahertz, which ranges from 902 to 928 megahertz. Mega is a prefix that means million. So these waves have a frequency of about 900 million hertz. Both of these bands are in common use in North America and City Theatrical uses both to broadcast wireless DMX. The 2.4 gigahertz band generally can carry more data while the 900 megahertz band can travel greater distances and can pass through objects better. It is important to note that while the 2.4 gigahertz band is used to, in much of the world for unlicensed use, the 900 megahertz band is for unlicensed use only in North America. And if you are listening today from outside North America, it won't be usable for you. The challenge of working with radio waves is that they are invisible and it isn't possible to know where they are without some specialized test equipment. So systems are often set up using the default settings and if they work, then all is well. But if they don't work, there's no way of knowing why and potential solutions are confined to making changes blindly and testing the results. In short, many systems are set up with nothing more than the hope that they will work. To that we say hope is not a strategy. Certainly not a strategy G, that you want to stake your motion picture setup or live show on, or stake your reputation or your career on. Spectrum analyzers, also known as frequency analyzers, make visible to you what is normally invisible. Once the radio waves can be visualized, then a coherent broadcast strategy can be developed, tested, refined, implemented, documented, and monitored. If I've given the impression that any of this is difficult, very high tech, or expensive, it isn't. It's fast and easy to set up and monitor. You can use the data to quickly make decisions, and it should be in the toolkit of anyone who has the responsibility for setting up a wireless DMX broadcast. Today, we'll look at how radio scan can help you visualize the radio energy in the spectrum around you, how you can use that data to understand the conditions in your area, and how you can use what you have learned to make an informed decision about the best settings for your own wireless DMX broadcast. 
City theatrical products have always given the user the ability to tune their broadcasts to produce the optimum results. And RadioScan works hand in hand with our multiverse wireless DMX products, and we'll explore that in depth today. Let's learn how to set up the RadioScan hardware and how to run the software. The hardware dongle simply plugs into a USB port on your computer. A laptop is most useful since you may want to be able to move around. After you have loaded the free software from the CTI website, start the program and your screen will look like this. By default, when you open the RadioScan software application, you will see this screen. Frequency is shown on the X axis on the bottom of the screen and Wi-Fi channels are shown on the X axis at the top of the screen. Amplitude is shown on the Y axis on the left of the screen. The 2.4 gigahertz scan starts automatically when the program is opened and a radio scan dongle is found. Here are the controls at the top of the screen. The connect button connects radio scan dongle to the radio scan program. The disconnect button disconnects radio scan dongle from the radio scan program. The open button opens a saved radio scan recording. The help button provides several features, including a link to the radio scan product manual, a link to the city theatrical website, a path to begin a firmware update, and the radio scan license information. The quit button quits the radio scan software program. The 2.4 gigahertz button selects the 2.40 to 2.483 gigahertz portion of the spectrum to scan. The 900 megahertz button selects the 902 to 928 megahertz portion of the spectrum to scan. The snapshot button takes a snapshot of the current screen and saved it at, saves it as a PNG file. You don't need to stop the scan to take a snapshot. The save button saves a recording of the current scan and prompts for a location to save. The scan does not need to be, to be stopped before saving. The spectrogram view, waterfall view toggles between spectrogram view and waterfall view of spectrum scan. We'll elaborate on those in a moment. The Multiverse Show IDs button opens a table that shows the relationship of Multiverse Show IDs to the spectrum and helps to choose the optimum area of the band on which to broadcast. We will elaborate on this in much greater depth later in this webinar. The Show Wi-Fi button shows location of Wi-Fi networks nearby and identifies their Wi-Fi channel, SSID, which is the name of the network, and RSSI, which is the network's current signal strength. This button allows the graphic depiction of these networks to be toggled on and off. The Wi-Fi list displays a table of Wi-Fi networks found, including their Wi-Fi channel, SSID, RSSI, and the list can be undocked, dragged to another location, and expanded. At the bottom of the screen, the scan button starts a new scan, the stop button stops the scan, and prompts to save. The lower right-hand corner of the screen shows both the elapsed time and clock time of the current scan, or the playback of a recorded scan. The scan bar tracks the course of the scan across the screen. It first appears after two minutes because both the spectrogram and waterfall views display an average of the previous two minutes of data. The scan can be rewound to view previous events by pulling the scan bar to the left. The scan continues to record, and then scan resumed by pulling back to the right. The cursor shows information as you move it around the screen. On spectrogram view, the crosshairs of the cursor show the frequency across the x-axis, the amplitude of the point where the cursor is on the y-axis, the density of that frequency, the current amplitude reading of that frequency, the average and maximum amplitudes over the previous two minutes for that frequency. The default view of the radio scan program is the spectrogram view. The x-axis shows the frequency and the y-axis represents the amplitude of the radio energy of those frequencies. Although the spectrogram view is two-dimensional, color provides a third dimension of analysis. The color of the spectrogram describes the density of radio energy on each frequency. We can describe density as the percentage of time a specific amplitude of radio energy was measured on a specific frequency during the immediately preceding two-minute period. Density can be expressed as colors like the chart on the upper right side of the screen. Density is an important tool in our analysis. Blue designates a radio signal of short duration, like a frequency hopping radio, and means the frequency has been utilized less than 6.25% of the time during the last two minutes. 
This may signify a radio signal of high amplitude but very short duration, like wireless DMX. Cyan designates the frequency was used slightly more of the time, with green, yellow, and orange progressing to higher usages over time until reaching red, which shows the frequency was used more than 50% of the time over the two previous two minutes. This is a rolling two-minute calculation that provides automatic that updates automatically as conditions change. Generally, when looking for a suitable place to put a broadcast, look for areas with more blue and less red. An area of high amplitude and high density should be avoided. An area of low amplitude and high density represents a nose noise floor that your signal would need to overcome to be successful. Spectrogram view often changes over time. By grabbing the scan bar at the bottom of the screen, you can scroll back through your scan to quickly see changes in the environment. This is valuable in diagnosing the source of broadcast problems. Notes can be added in spectrogram view. Place your cursor at the spot you want to add a note anywhere on the screen and left click your mouse. Enter a note of unlimited length, click OK, and the note will be pinned to the screen starting at the point of your mouse click. Multiple notes can be added this way at various locations on the screen. Left click on an existing note to edit right click on an existing note to delete. If a recording of the scan is saved, the note will appear in the entire recording. Screenshots like this one can be saved and emailed to colleagues for sharing information about spectrum use. In this view, we've labeled areas of the spectrum that are mission critical. Waterfall view gives a different look at radio energy. The x-axis again represents frequency, while the y-axis represents time, scrolling down in real time and showing the previous two minutes on the screen. Each mark on the screen represents radio energy on a given frequency at a particular moment in time. The amplitude of the radio signal is denoted by its color, the blue representing low amplitude signals and red representing high amplitude signals. Waterfall view uses actual clock time adjusted automatically for your location and allows you to roll back time to see the moment a device is turned on or off. This can help to track down the source of interference. Notes can be added in waterfall view. Place your cursor at the spot you want to add a note and left click your mouse. Enter a note of unlimited length, click OK, and the note will be pinned to the left margin of the screen at that point in time, and a line will be drawn across the screen. Left click on an existing note to edit, right click on an existing note to delete the note and the horizontal line. The Multiverse IDs feature is for users of City Theatrical's Multiverse Wireless DMX and will define the show ID that may be selected for various areas of the band, either 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz. Multiverse show IDs are a descriptive number that designates several important items. The show ID chart helps explain it graphically by showing how the show ID number is constructed. The first digits denote the area of the spectrum in which we will choose the broadcast, either 24 for 2.4 GHz or 9 for 900 MHz. The second element of the show ID denotes the data rate. Faster data rates provide more DMX universes, slower data rates travel longer distances, and provide more immunity to interference. The third element shows exactly where in the chosen band we will place our broadcast. The choices are adaptive hopping, which is constantly looking for free spaces in the full band, full bandwidth hopping, hopping on only the low end of the band, the middle of the band, the upper end of the band, or what we call the max end of the band around Wi-Fi channels 13 and 14, where in the U.S. there is no Wi-Fi activity. The last digit of the show ID gives a hop pattern. Although there are many choices for hop patterns that apply to extremely large installations, it's rare to use anything but zero. When the Multiverse IDs button is selected, a table appears on the right side of the screen. The horizontal x-axis of the table shows the number of universes that a show ID can carry, and the vertical y-axis of the table shows the relative position in the band where the broadcast will be. In the table, we can see that show ID 24340 is limited to the max area of the 2.4 GHz spectrum, and it can carry five universes of data. Hovering over each individual show ID in the table reveals another smaller table below the main table with more information, including the exact frequency and the potential range. 
Additionally, when hovering over a show ID, an overlay will appear over the scan. It shows the portion of the band that the broadcast will reach while using the selected show ID. Here, show ID 24310 has been selected, and the light green overlay shows the low band selection that will avoid the interference in the upper end of the band. Clicking on any show ID button in the table will lock the overlay to the screen where it will appear in all recordings and screenshots. Radio Scan allows the multiverse user to find the optimum area for the chosen band on which to broadcast and directs them in how to best set up their multiverse gear. This becomes an important part of the user's broadcast plan and can be documented by using the snapshot and notes features and submitted by email to your colleagues on the production or to a venue spectrum manager if required or just use as a method of record keeping for the production. Begin your thought processes by creating a broadcast plan by deciding how many use universes need to be transmitted. Show IDs that carry fewer, fewer universes travel longer distances and often have more perfect fidelity than show IDs that carry more universes. A good rule of thumb is to choose show IDs with lowered universe capacity when possible and spread out your broadcast over more than one radio when possible such as splitting your broadcast between the 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz radios on a 5910 multiverse transmitter. The most challenging shows for wireless DMX often involve direct view LED pixel chases, and they require careful planning and the use of show IDs that carry only one or two universes. Nearly any other combination of equipment, including moving lights, LED fixtures, and conventional dimmers will operate well on show IDs that can carry any number of universes. Let's look at a few real world situations. Here's a scan showing a spectrum full of high amplitude but low density radioactivity as designated by the blue vertical lines across the screen. We could confidently broadcast just about anywhere in this environment. If our show needs five universes, we can hover over show ID 24300 and an overlay will appear showing where our broadcast will be placed on the spectrum. By clicking on 24300, the overlay will remain on screen for the duration of the scan and in all recordings and screenshots. Using Radio Scan, we can have confidence in our broadcast working well. Contrast that to setting up your gear without having seen the spectrum activity around you and never knowing the challenges you may be facing. The next step would be to set your multiverse transmitter or multiverse node acting as a transmitter and our multiverse nodes acting as receivers to the show IDs we choose and then to do a test broadcast to verify our signal quality either visually on the nodes or by RDM using DMX cat. These are wireless DMX best practices that should be done on every important installation. The on they only take a moment to do, and again, will give you confidence in achieving a good broadcast. There's another real world example. Although we see a lot of blue in the scan, we also see over 50 Wi-Fi networks, which at any time could produce unpredictable amounts of radio energy. If we wanted to broadcast here, we could, and we might choose a full band show ID to spread our broadcast over a wide area, like we did in the last example. But we have another alternative that we can explore. When we are using multiverse nodes as receivers in North America, we can move our broadcast over to the 900 megahertz band. In this case, I have chosen show ID 9300, which can broadcast five universes and uses the full band. There's radioactivity shown here in the 900 megahertz band, but it is minor. And the show ID 9300 is a good choice for our broadcast. Using this strategy in North America is often the best alternative to fighting crowded spectrum. Let's take a look at a typical situation that our colleagues outside of the US will face without the ability to switch over to 900 megahertz. Here is a somewhat crowded spectrum in which we might want to avoid the activity on the main Wi-Fi channels of 1, 6, and 11. I've selected the 5 universe show ID, 24340, which is limited to what we call the max area at the far upper end of the 2.4 GHz band. This area shows some medium amplitude, low density radioactivity that will likely be in the noise floor below our broadcast, making this a suitable choice for us. When choosing a location for your broadcast, remember that areas in blue are utilized by other radios only 6.25% of the time or less, and multiverse's frequency hopping broadcast 
can exist with them quite well. We're coming to the end of our lesson for today. We've shown you the setup and operation of RadioScan and some basic real-world examples of how to use it. Using a RadioScan frequency analyzer can open up new worlds for you in wireless DMX and can give you a deeper understanding of your broadcast. If you have the responsibility on your production for having good wireless DMX broadcast, you owe it to yourself and your production to get RadioScan. It can truly set you apart from other wireless DMX users, and it can play a big part in making you an industry expert in wireless DMX. We've covered a lot of ground in our seven webinars on Multiverse Wireless DMX. Whether you're a professional or a beginner, I hope you learned some useful skills. Over the course of our webinars, we covered topics like understanding frequency hopping spread spectrum radio transmission, understanding the 11 breakthrough features of multiverse technology, understanding city theatrical show IDs and why we use that system, using wireless RDM for setup and troubleshooting. We reinforced basic wireless DMX best practices several times. We learned how to use specialized antennas to improve signal quality. We set up point to point and point to multi-point broadcasts. We set up and tested a complex nine universe broadcast with 18 receivers. We set up and operated the Multiverse Show Baby, Multiverse Node, Multiverse Transmitter, ColorFlex Multiverse Dimmers, and the Multiverse Receiver Card. And today, we learned how to use Radio Scan to view the 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz spectrums and understand them, how to develop a coherent broadcast strategy, and how to implement it, monitor it, and document it. I'm also proud to say that all of the innovative wireless DMX technology seen in our seven webinars was designed, developed, and manufactured in the USA by our highly skilled engineers and craftspeople in our Carlsdatt, New Jersey factory, and is sold and serviced by our sales and customer service team in our Carlsdatt, New Jersey, and our London, England offices. We have more innovative multiverse wireless DMX products in development right now, and we'll have more webinars for you soon. For more information about anything you have seen, please contact the City Theatrical offices in the U.S. or the U.K., visit our website, citytheatrical.com, our Facebook page, or get in touch with any of the great City Theatrical distributors around the world for more information on City Theatrical's products. So we have time for some questions on the radio scan, um, but you can also ask any questions about uh, any of the other webinars in our series. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, okay, so the first one, can I use radio scan to view 5.8 gigahertz band? No, um, the radio scan is only operational in 2.4 and 900 megahertz. Um, let's see, what else? Can I use the radio scan to optimize, where is it? Optimize my home or office Wi-Fi. Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, home Wi-Fi works in 2.4 gigahertz, so uh, it's very well suited for that. The Wi-Fi list will show you all the Wi-Fi networks in that area, their name, and also their signal strength. So, you know, which uh, apartment uh, to yell at has got too much uh, of their Wi-Fi going on. Um, let's see. Can I use radio scan with other wireless DMX systems? Absolutely. So, um, it can be used with any 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz system. The multiverse features won't apply to those systems. And um, many other systems uh, don't have a way to tune the broadcast to specific bands, but uh, you can use it with any other device perfectly well. Um, do you have a radio scan model for a smartphone? Uh, not currently, but we are uh, continuing to add features to radio scan as time goes on. Um, and like we've done with our DMX product, they will be uh, automatically released and uh, free software updates. Um, can the radio scan be used for tracking down the source of a signal? Uh, that's a good question. Um, there are temporal cues that are helpful in finding the source of interference, such as noting the time it happens and trying to find out if that time is consistent each day. But as for sniffing out a signal or tracking it with a directional antenna, no, uh, we don't have that presently, but it is on our feature development list. Um, you said it is best to use show IDs with lower universe counts for direct VLED chases. So what if I need to do a chase with a high universe count? Um, yeah, so we've successfully done uh, direct view nine universe LED chases under those uh, difficult broadcast conditions. Um, if you're able to do it at a lower data rate, 
uh, show ID that carries fewer, fewer universes, you'll increase your odds of a perfect broadcast. That's why we recommend it. Um, and why do you have so many hopping patterns? Um, well, that's because multiverse is built for a future when all lighting is wireless. A very large system will need to be controlled. Having multiple hopping patterns on each show ID helps allow this. Um, let's see what else we got. Is there an email address I can talk to you for a fairly specific question? Uh, yeah, so uh, info at City Theatrical, sales at citytheatrical.com, or uh, support at citytheatrical.com is a gr are great emails to uh, reach a wide swath of people, and then whoever is best to uh, help with it will uh, be able to answer your question. Um, let's see, that's looking like, is it possible to view Zigbee channels in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum instead of Wi-Fi? Uh, yes, there is actually a, uh, a toggle button that you can switch to be able to see what uh, the Zigbee channels are. And since they're both in 2.4, it's uh, good to go. Um, let's see, that's, we're coming up on the end of our time now. So um, if we didn't get to your question, we'll answer it by email. Um, I want to thank everyone who joined us today. This and all of the webinars are going to be posted on our website and on our YouTube channel. Um, goodbye and have a great day.